so very warm welcome once again guys uh, to my youtube channel simulation engineer uh, today the topic of uh, this video session is will be about uh, using the forecast advance function to predict the confidence level or you can say in other terms the confidence meter of your forecast data so i'm making this video on the request of one of our uh, youtube viewers of my channel or subscriber and uh, this video will be a continuation of uh, my first video which i did um, some days back ago and i have used just linear function so if you can see in this plot here i have used um, the actual data which is in blue color and then i predicted it by using linear function forecast which is plotted here in the orange function so today the objective of this video is to plot uh, the forecast data using the ETS function. So what is ETS? It is like exponential triple smoothing. We will see later on in detail. And then uh, to predict the confidence level, like you have upper and lower limits. So if you have uh, this data and in which limits uh, the average value or the mean value of your data is sitting in. So um, if you have never uh, seen before, I have um, a playlist which is called WPS Tips and Tricks. Uh, if you go on my channel and go to this playlist or you can go through videos, you will find it. Uh, this is the first part, data analysis using forecast function. So it's a WPS spreadsheet based on this one. But uh, there is a small uh, note I would like to mention here that I am making this video with LibreOffice. So as uh, you guys know, it's um, I'm also uh, making these videos mostly with WPS Office as a cost effective solution to, to Microsoft Excel. So LibreOffice is actually exactly the same. Uh, it is also under Creative Commons license. Uh, uh, if you can see, for example, here, if you scroll down, it's totally free of course you can download it go ahead and if you have never used it it's similar to microsoft office or wps office um, the reason why i've chosen LibreOffice uh, to demonstrate uh, this ets functionality together with forecast because um, unfortunately in wps i was not able to find any function so they have a, a normal linear function forecast function available but they are not offering uh, the advanced function or the ETS function, which is not available over there. So that's why I opted to go for, uh, once again, a cost-effective solution, which is uh, this open source uh, stuff. But that's why I'm, I'm, I'm using uh, the labor office compared to uh, WPS office. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, there, there is no, there is no minor or big change or so i would say not huge differences in these tools so the the functionality and uh, the file conventions everything is the same so i would encourage you guys to uh, have a look and uh, download this tool it's uh, also equally very good okay so um, we'll move on to now the real part as we know that um, in, in Microsoft Excel, there is a forecast.ets.conf int function available. So uh, based on the request of one of my viewers of, from my channel uh, is that I should make a video with the forecast.ets.conf int. So it is actually about the forecast using the exponential triple smoothing and to predict the confidence interval. Yeah, so this is actually uh, in detail if you wanted to uh, read this function as it is. As also you can see on the screen, so ETS is actually exp exponential triple smoothing. It is kind of a set of your algorithms in which you, you will predict not only the trend, but also the periodical uh, influences or the seasonal behavior. Yeah, as how the data is processed. So you can foresee based on your actual values. If uh, uh, you don't know the periodical influence or you don't know the periodic length or like the, the length of your period of the samples, uh, if it is, let's say, zero, then uh, the tool or the function will be acting as EDS. So it will be exponential double smoothing. The alg algorithm is not calculated based on the ETS format or the ETS uh, expressions, but it will take into account the double, uh, exponential double smoothing. So um, EDS also produces kind of then linear forecast, yeah. So uh, 
Labor Office spreadsheet also provides this forecast.ets function. The, as I mentioned earlier, that, that, is the, that is the main reason why I have chosen for this demonstration uh, instead of the WPS spreadsheet, I'm choosing now I'll calculate using the Libra Office spreadsheet because they have uh, this uh, forecast.ets functionality like Excel. So in order to predict this confidence interval, uh, here it is called as a, a period interval. I am using uh, this function uh, forecast.ets.pi, so period interval dot add function. So what does this add utility? It predicts the additive, uh, uh, let's say the forecast of the values. And um, this function is also, as I mentioned in the brackets here, it's in Excel, Microsoft Excel, it is written as this, this, um, with this uh, formulation or uh, this syntax, as you can see on the top. Uh, the normally the forecast is calculated on the base value plus you have a trend and you will multiply uh, with your delta x like your increment yeah and plus uh, your periodical aberrations you will see in, uh, in detail when i will show you the syntax so this will be the function which i am using forecast.ets.pi.ed and the syntax for this function is like this one so you will specify the target like you will specify your particular row in specific column and then the values which are already available and the timeline which is already available for you that is that means you have an existing data for uh, values and timeline values is like uh, you are plotting in the y-axis and timeline is like an x-axis and then you have a confidence level which is a important parameter this is also mandatory Normally the tool is using, uh, the function is using default value of 0.95, so 95%, meaning that if you have uh, with the 95% of your confidence level, means that 95% uh, prediction interval will be computed. So your 95% of your future points are to like, they should fall within this um, this area from, from your forecast, okay? All right, now let's move to our spreadsheet if uh, those of guys uh, guys who have already watched my previous video forecast function you can see i have uh, used this data before these are the average values of of a fuel uh, per liter in euros um, and it's a kind of a, a fuel price history from year 2000 till 2021 and the objective is to like predict for the next uh, 30 years uh, next um, about uh, eight or nine years so we wanted to go let's say for example 2030 we have our data available from till 2021 so this orange color i have already shown in the start this is the curve which is based on a linear forecast function so what i will do now is um, i will demonstrate first of all how to use uh, this forecast.ets function by using this dot add command add doesn't mean anything except just uh, you are adding or using this additive forecast so we'll be using this function to calculate uh, the forecast and we will compare our result with a linear one but then based on our confidence confidence level i will compute the confidence interval and i will show you the upper and lower values compare and how it really interacts with the forecasted values right okay so let's start i've already shown you the formula so uh, we can start uh, here as with other programs with WPS spreadsheet or Microsoft Excel. So forecast dot ETS dot add. So then I will start with the round bracket and then it, uh, the software will uh, directly show me the uh, in syntax or the arguments which is required for this particular function. So the first one is this target. So the target is uh, I'm calculating for the year 2022. Then I will go to the next argument by pressing comma. So the values. So values, you have to provide the previous actual values. That is the y-axis. You press again the comma. Now you will see that the code is moved to timeline. So the timeline is this here. So it's the period or the time period you have. So we go this point. Now the code is... Uh, uh, the function moves on to period or periodic length so you can see that uh, it is also mentioning number of samples in period default is one so length of the seasonal pattern and all this stuff so we will stick with the default I will press one we will move on to the next one 
so i will go further and then it's asking about the data completion so i will say i will stick with default so i will type one comma so these there are some uh, three or two of these options the last ones are one of uh, are like optional and there is one which is also mandatory then we will move on to the last one which is aggregation so this is uh, very important to mention here that uh, the default value is one so one equals to average there are about uh, in total seven functions available where you can perform this aggregation so not only average you can you have like sum count count a max minimum median there are different values available different ways of calculating this but we'll, we will uh, stick to the one so uh, we will say one and then we will close the bracket and press enter so you can see now that we have calculated our value based on uh, this uh, uh, this um, ETS dot add function. So uh, the only thing which is now missing is that I need to fix this one because these are now like um, not variable. It's like fixed values, absolute values. So make sure that you fix this one because we need to calculate the the next remaining rows our values for the next uh, years. So you normally fix uh, your range by using these dollar signs okay so now by simply dragging down by uh, keeping our left mouse pressed we simply drag down and we will get all the values for the next period so we have our values here this is just for the reference because when we will be plotting our results so i will be starting from this point so that it converges uh, at the same point for each uh, each plot so we can have a better uh, like comparison okay so confidence interval we'll be calculating our confidence interval based on the confidence level of 95 percent which is also the default value the function is using now i'll i am using the forecast dot ets dot confidence interval which is called in excel here we will call it as a, a prediction interval or period interval so it's like a prediction interval so it's pi dot add and i will start uh, with this one so target is again once again 2022 now we will press the comma again it's the same as we have used in the previous function we will press uh, once again the comma and we will go to the timeline so timeline is this we will press the comma again and uh, now it is asking about the confidence level so confidence level is default 0 0.95 already mentioned so we will type 0 0.95 press comma so the period length is like one it's one again and we'll stick again to the last one once again it is one so the only thing which is now we should change again that we should fix this range this uh, should be absolute value this should not really vary as we move on to the next rows so we have it here so it's also done so let's see now we are moving to these values and we are trying to fix our range once it is done i will press enter so this is my confidence interval for this particular period of time now i will drag it i will get my other values what will happen is that now i would like to compute the upper limit and the lower limit of my forecast value how do you calculate this one it's very easy so the lower limit is calculated like this so you take this one plus the confidence interval done and then i will drag it out simply till to the end and i have my lower upper limit for the lower limit i will take uh, the focus dot ets dot function say minus my confidence interval so it's also done and then you drag it out till 2020 and then we will having all these plots so uh, this is the way normally you calculate your forecast function based on this ets formulation so as this is the linear one and this is like uh, exponential triple smoothing and then you calculate your confidence interval 
and based on your confidence interval you will calculate your lower upper and the lower limits and when we will plot this data you can see that uh, by using this linear which is this orange color that it is really sh showing almost a linear inter a linear relationship and based on this linear prediction it is giving you the result so it's kind of sitting between still in between these two data but uh, if we use this exponential triple smoothing the ats function the forecast uh, is looking much realistic and uh, it's uh, the accuracy increases and then based on um, uh, these uh, upper and the lower limits uh, the prediction function uh, will get kind of a confidence uh, in such a way that how accurate your data is so if we see that the trend of lower and upper is almost the same which follows this one and uh, then you can at least predict the data uh, also even for next coming next periods um, okay this is a behavior and then um, the recommendation here is that uh, if you are really good looking for really accurate stuff uh, one should really go for much uh, accurate functions like ETS if you really wanted to see uh, very quickly a journal behavior or the trend uh, then uh, maybe the linear function is uh, is uh, almost okay but it is not really recommended in all the cases one should also try to uh, look from other point of view in a way that you should try to plot um, with the uh, more advanced functions if they are available and to see if the data prediction really makes sense and compare it with the linear value as i did here so the the one uh, with this uh, purple color and the orange color we can see that uh, the linear behavior is like over predicting and uh, uh, the one with the exponential triple smoothing function it seems to be giving a realistic trend and uh, keeping in also uh, intact with the upper and the lower limit so this will give you a kind of a, a prediction interval or a confidence interval which is called in excel so that uh, you have now a complete data set of your forecast uh, against each time period or each time uh, based on the period length and uh, your confidence level uh, which is we have used about of 95 um, percent yeah i think uh, um, i hope i i am able to explain this in detail uh, this advanced function or this uh, functionality of the forecast function with the combination of exponential triple smoothing and also compared my result with a linear one um so with this i will conclude my today's video session i hope you like the video and um, i would uh, once again as always uh, like uh, request you guys to like my video don't forget to like uh, uh, press the like button and also don't forget to 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 subscribe my channel if you have not done it until now and uh, please share and subscribe my channel and uh, uh I would say just uh, stay tuned for the next interesting incoming videos and uh, if you have any requests or any um, anything uh, really interesting related to uh, these functions or you want me to do some specific videos on specific topics uh, in Microsoft Excel or in WPS spreadsheet or in LibreOffice as I did it today just let me know just drop your comments in the comment section and i will also uh, by the way post the link of my previous video uh, forecast function in the link and um, i will also post uh, the link of uh, this liber office tool in the description section and uh, yeah i would say take care stay safe have a nice day bye bye